Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt Holges. I'm a senior business advisor with Catalyst Connection. For those of you who don't know, Catalyst Connection is an economic development organization dedicated to serving the interests and needs of manufacturers here in southwestern Pennsylvania. We do that in two ways, either leveraging our consultants that we have on staff or leveraging the expertise of our vetted network of third parties. Uh, today's presentation on CRM uh, integration and CRM uh, implementation is with one of those vetted third parties, PLUS Consulting. I'll tell you why we like working with PLUS. Uh, PLUS has an extensive experience in working with manufacturers here in our region, but more importantly, they take a platform agnostic approach to technology integration, specifically with CRM integration. So instead of relying on somebody reselling a specific product or service, they help to identify the needs that manufacturers have and uh, align the appropriate resources and products to uh, provide a, a unique solution for that, that uh, client. Um, before we, you, we start on this program, I did want to let you know that we will be following up this uh, presentation with an email with a link to the ARC Power Grant. Uh, the ARC Power Grant is made available to manufacturers in our 12 counties and provides up to $10,000 reimbursement for technology integration. And when you look at CRM, that's a perfect fit for these types of programs. So you may be entitled to receive some of those grant dollars to offset some of your investments in CRM implementation. Uh, today's presenters with Plus Consulting is Scott Wolf and Alec Mundy. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll turn this over to Scott. Thanks. Or actually, Alec will take it over from here, and I'll turn it back over to Scott. So I'm going to get us kicked off on the Plus Consulting side. But thank you so much. Um, really appreciate the opportunity here to present. Um, it's always good to kick off a presentation with the uh, idea of giving away free money, right? So $10,000 free money for you right here. Um, so it makes my job a little bit easier. But um, <clears throat> my name is Alec Mundy, Vice President of Sales for Plus Consulting. And uh, we do have Scott Wolf on the line as well, who's going to be going into a little bit of a demonstration for you. Um, Scott worked with Infor CRM for many years. He recently came over to Plus. Um, and uh, he's going to give you a little bit of a demo of in for CRM. But today we're going to talk about um, CRM basics, right? Um, this is the first in a series of a few webinars. Um, this one's going to cover some of the basics, and the next one's going to get into some integration with systems that you may have in place already. So um, we'll go to the next slide here, and I'll tell you a little bit of a story to set the stage. So if we can click to the next slide. Um, so I don't know how many of you have recently gone to a car dealership or, or bought a car, but my most recent experience in, in the car buying process was not necessarily a good one. Um, so I like to keep cars for years and years, make sure that they're paid off, drive them into the ground. My wife likes to get a new car um, or slightly used car every two years. And she's very specific about what she wants. And when she gets it in her head, we have to go out there and find it, right? So, so last time we we bought a car, um, you know, I went to uh, a dealership that we've used in the past, right? And they have two separate locations, right? Um, both of these locations are owned by the same company, right? Same name, same company, same database. Um, my wife knew what she was looking for, right? She wanted a very specific car, a very specific model. Um, with a specific color, with black wheels. She knew exactly what she was looking for, but she wanted it to be used, preferably one or two years old with a certain amount of miles on it. Not easy to find, right? But we called both locations. Right? One location told us that they didn't have the vehicle that they were showing they did have online when he had checked. The other location said, oh yeah, the one you found online, we do have it here, right? Neither one of the sales reps that we had talked to had communicated with each other about our needs as a customer, or the fact that um, we had previously purchased multiple cars from this dealership. Neither one of them knew that you know this would be our sixth car purchased from the same dealership. Um, we didn't have the same sales rep, right? Because I think there had been some turnover there, but um, we had also had a lot of maintenance done on our vehicles um, at one of those locations for, again, the last six years. So not only did the sales reps fight over the business, um, even though it was the same company, but neither one of them truly knew us as a client. Uh, they didn't know our purchase history, our maintenance history, our vehicle preferences, um, you know, what, um, 
the fact that we had a, a child, um, a three-year-old that the last time we bought a car, he was one and he's three and a half years old now. And we were looking for an SUV. So it would be easier to get him into the car. That could have been something that they would have known, but had no clue. Um, they also didn't realize that we attend their annual event every year at uh, the Vintage Grand Prix in Pittsburgh. So there's a, an event where there's vintage cars that we love to take our, our son to. And uh, they sponsor um, a tent and they always send us free tickets and we go and they had no clue that we had been there. But long story short, we were pretty frustrated with our experience. Um, having been a repeat customer, we had to repeat ourselves and what we needed and what we were looking for to every sales rep, every sales man manager, everybody that we had talked to there. Um, kind of felt a little bit disrespected as a longtime client. And we chose ultimately to go elsewhere and buy from a different dealership and a different brand. Um, imagine if the situation was different. So if we had called in um, or walked in the door and the moment that we walked in, they would have said, you know, hi, Mr. Mundy, it looks like you haven't been back to purchase a car in a few years. But, you know, we noticed that you recently stopped by our tent at the Vintage Grand Prix event this summer. How was the event? right? How is your three-year-old son doing? It's been a while since he's come in here, right? Um, those are nice little touches, right, that show that you care and also show that you have a 360 degree view of your customer that they just didn't have. And it was frustrating, especially given the fact that most people that we buy from, most organizations that we buy from these days know us very well as a client and a customer um, or a potential customer. So, uh, Having told that story, here's why. I'm gonna move into the next slide and, and tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, so the CRM dilemma, right? I think most of you have probably heard of CRM and that's why you're on this webinar, but the promise of CRM, right? And what what the, the rainbows and, and, and puppy dogs version of CRM that, that you've always heard about is that all of your customer facing employees are gonna be empowered and have that complete picture of the customer within the organization who's interacted with them, right? What their purchase history was, right? They're gonna know everything about you when you walk in the door, you give them a call, right? So that would be sales, service, marketing, could be field service, maintenance, technicians, all working together to produce a great experience for your customer. The reality of CRM um, oftentimes, unfortunately, is that people look at it as a tool that their manager uses, big brother style, to, to know what they're doing, right? How many activities? Do you have in a day? Are you reaching out to your customers, right? What does your sales pipeline look like? Um, which are important things, uh, but I think it's it's more important to focus on the customer. Uh, and, and when you do focus on that 360 degree view of the customer, you end up with happier clients and more business. Um, but the reality of CRM in most cases is that it's a big Rolodex and the outdated contact information in it doesn't do us very much good. So. Move on to the next one. So how do we solve that problem, right? Um, for most of you that are on the line now, there's a good chance that you own a financial system that is uh, in for technology, right? The company in for owns many different ERP systems. Um, what we're talking about today is in for CRM, how it looks, how it feels, and how it integrates with the systems that you may already own. So that promise, the rainbows and puppy dogs promise that we were talking about, um, Infor delivers on that promise when you have an Infor ERP system, right? So how do they deliver on that promise, right? You can see here you have customer service reps, sales reps, um, marketing department, field service, techs, maintenance people, all having a view of the customer. And what I mean by that is they have a view online, right? They can see on their computer, they can see mobile, right? From a phone, you can be out there in the field and you can tell them what the last orders were that a client had, how many orders they've purchased over the last year, the last month, has that gone up? Has it gone down recently? Let's look, did they have a recent complaint? I'm going to show up at their door and I didn't even know that they called in yesterday and they were upset about something. Um, and I'm going to look like an idiot when I walk in if I don't know that information, right? So these are all ways that in for integrated with your financial system can give you that 360 degree view so that you can give your clients a better experience and then they they know and understand that you care about them. So we'll move on to the next one.
So with that being said, um, I'm not gonna talk anymore, but I just wanted to set the stage for you know, what you're about to see and how it could potentially help you and in your individual organization um, integrated with the financial systems that you use today. So I'm gonna turn it over to Scott Wolf, who is our Infor CRM engineer, who's going to give you a demonstration uh, of the solution that we're talking about today. Awesome, thanks Alec, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Wolf. Uh, so what I want to do today is walk you through Infor CRM in a day in the life type scenario. Uh, in an overview like this, the last thing I want to do is, is put you folks to sleep. So I want to spend maybe 30 minutes walking through the different ways that your team could interact with Infor CRM uh, in the different ways that they uh, use in the day, right? Whether they're sitting at a desk, uh, they're out in the field or using Outlook uh, and that integration. <clears throat> so before I put on the, the role playing hat of a, a sales user and a sales manager, uh, I want to sort of do a quick navigation. Uh, so the, the blessing and the curse, so to speak, of an overview presentation like this, the blessing is uh, you guys get to see that everything that Infor CRM has to offer. Uh, the curse is you're seeing everything that Infor CRM has to offer. Uh, so part of what uh, we would do here at Plus Consulting is work with your teams uh, to simplify the solution, customize and configure the tool uh, to fit your industry and your needs. Um, so take that with a grain of salt as we walk through the system today that uh, this is the floodgates uh, turned wide open, so to speak. So the basic navigation of the tool really resides along the left hand side. So there's four main pillars to Infor CRM and we'll spend most of the day today here within sales. So when I'm in the sales bucket, I would have probably what you would expect, accounts, contacts, leads, opportunities, integration into some of the ERP that Alec mentioned so I can get quotes, orders, invoices, receivables, shipments, things of that nature. But maybe I'm a marketing rep or a marketing manager and I want to create some campaigns or track leads. And Alec mentioned some of the service techs that could use the tool so we could create tickets or cases, deal with returns, problems, issues, things of that nature throughout the system and even into defects. So as we move through the system, um, we can start seeing that the, the different roles are all included here within, this, within uh, the main view. So when I come in, what I wanna do is put that role playing hat on now and we're gonna pretend that I'm a sales rep for the morning and when I come in, I wanna take a look at my dashboard. This is the main view when I log into the system to give me the information that I care about in my individual role. So I, I created a sales dashboard for today um, and put a couple examples of what I think a salesperson would care about. If I come in, I want to look at my open opportunities real quick, right? So I can see I've got a five and a half or five and a quarter million dollar opportunity here with Abbott. Probably want to call them and make sure I'm up to date with what's going on with that you know, in a couple six figure opportunities here. So real quick, I can see my current pipeline or maybe I wanna look at my pipeline by stage, right? So I've got a nice funnel chart here. Maybe my leads that I haven't followed up on. Uh, perhaps we went to a trade show or customers were hitting our website uh, and there were some leads that were assigned to me that I haven't called yet. Uh, so I can view these really quickly and start making some dials. One of the big important things that a CRM will do is keep you organized. So I can see here that I have a few activities. I need to send a proposal to Mike. Uh, I have an on-site meeting with John this afternoon. So I wanna make sure I go visit with him. So this keeps me up to date, uh, integrating with my Outlook calendar so I can stay informed with what I need to do for today. Another example would be maybe my key accounts. What do I care about? Who are my top customers? So I could start drilling through into my account list. And this is uh, filtered on me, my login. Or maybe I want to take a look at some of my completed activities. So these are just an example of uh, some of the uh, widgets that would be available for you. Uh, but maybe I want to take a look at the bigger picture. Perhaps I want to look at the macro view and I'm a sales manager. I want to take a look at what some of the orders are that are in the system. So we're getting into some of that ERP integration in a visualization, right? So I can see what are my orders by status, right? How many open orders do I have? How many active orders? Um, maybe I want to take a look at uh, product family. What are we selling more of? Uh, in this case, we're selling a lot of arts and crafts, right? Uh, so that's nice to see that uh, those orders are coming in. Or maybe I want to look at uh, orders by rep. 
So it looks like Lee Hogan's got about 64 of them and Ed Martinez here has two. Uh, we should probably call Ed and figure out what he's doing, <laughs> right? Um, so we can take a look at some of the information based on the macro or micro view of my organization. Really a powerful way for me when I log in to get the information that I care about really quick so I can stay more organized and more effective as I'm trying to manage my day. So as a sales user, again, I've now putting that role play hat on. I've kind of analyzed, I've got it, I know what I need to do. Um, I've kind of taken a peek at some of my top opportunities. And now I want to go and start understanding some of my accounts. So I'm going to click on the account view here. And what I want to do is we're going to pretend that I'm going into St. Louis for a trade show. So I want to quickly look at all of our customers that are in the state of Missouri because I want to give them a call and let them know that I'm coming to St. Louis, okay? So when I click on accounts, you'll see that there's 1,100 accounts in the system in this view that sort of looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Now, 1,100 accounts is more than I want to manage or maintain, so I can use these filters on the right-hand side and I can start segmenting the data, sort of building a report of the accounts that are in the system. Quickly, I'm gonna actually just hide this left navigation just to simply give us a little bit more real estate. So I can use these filters and I wanna say, well, first let's get rid of any account in the system that's not a customer because I actually wanna go visit my customers. So now I took it from, what was it, 1100 down to 377. And I wanna go into Missouri and say, give me a list of all of my customers that are in the state of Missouri. So with a couple clicks, I took that list from 1100 down to eight. So these are my customers that are in Missouri. So a pretty simple report, but in theory, if I'm running Excel spreadsheets, disparate systems, I've got a bunch of reps that are keeping track of all of their information, you know, in their head or in Rolodexes, those five clicks I just did could be half a day's worth of work of consolidating data, figuring out who knows who, where, which ones are our actual customers. And anyways, so I'm able to get this view and I can even save this as a group, promote it to my dashboard, um, which are the groups across the top here. So I could come back at a later date and view who my customers are that are in Missouri. So I'm gonna come here and click into Abbott Worldwide and start getting an understanding of who my account is and what our relationship is with Abbott as an organization. So at the top, I have the, I guess you could call the name rank serial number. Who is Abbott? So they're an account in Missouri Here's some of the basic information. We get into the account ownership. So we can know who at your organization owns this account. We get into some security settings and then we can classify them appropriately here. So great, they're a customer of ours, but what type of customer? How do they interact with us? Or maybe they're not a customer. Maybe they're a vendor or a competitor of ours. But the real true rich value of a CRM that Alec mentioned earlier resides here in this gray bar across the middle. This is where we really get into that visibility of the 360 degree view into this account. So the first thing that's probably the most important is our relationship with Abbott is who works there? Who do we know as a company? So we know John Abbott, he's the president and CEO. He's in Chicago. And Lou, he's the VP of sales and he lives in Tennessee. So I can get phone numbers and emails and all those types of things. We'll get into email integration in just a moment. But it's important for us to know as a company who we're working with at Abbott, right? The notes in history is our communication. So now as I'm trying to figure out, you know, that I want to call Abbott, I need to understand my company's relationship with Abbott and who we've been talking to. Abbott, or, uh, Alec made a comment earlier you know, it's pretty catastrophic if you go to call a customer to make a sale and you see that they've already been, you know, somebody else has already talked to them that same day, or maybe there's an open ticket or case. So I want to get information and understand what our relationship has been with this account. So I can see back on the 6th, the administrator spoke with Ben Gillis. But if I come back, I can see we also spoke with Jennifer Hunt. So who from your company is speaking to Abbott? Now this will save you countless hours of phone calls, IMs, or walking over to the cube down the hall and asking someone, hey, have you spoken with Abbott? This is truly the breadcrumbs 
and truly the power of the system of understanding who from your company is speaking to Abbott. I talked about earlier my activities for the day. Where do I need to go? Who do I need to visit? I can see in here, oh yeah, don't forget. I need to send them that proposal. Don't forget next week, I need to follow up on that quote. I can get all that information right here and help me become more organized. Not just that, if a customer comes to me with a request, I can schedule an activity for someone else. Perhaps I need to reach to Alec or have the customer, have Alec reach out to the customer, excuse me, so I could schedule an activity or a phone call for Alec to call this customer because it got escalated. And I need to see what type of business we've done with Abbott. So I can view all open opportunities, closed opportunities, uh, and we can take a look at the business uh, as a whole. So is this a key customer? Are we winning a lot of business? Are we losing a lot of business? What does that look like? If you guys are able to attend the next presentation we do in a couple of weeks, I'm going to dive really deep into the integration, into a financial on the back end. But here you can see we have quotes, orders, and invoices. This is really powerful in CRM because I'm able to see this information and be more intelligent. So as I'm planning to go visit Abbott, I'm inviting them to the trade show I mentioned. I can see not just who's who we've spoken with and the phone calls we've made with them, but I'm also able to see if they have any open orders or quotes. Maybe I wanna thank them for a recent order that I didn't even know they signed perhaps. So I can get visibility into that right here, which is really powerful. And the last thing I think that would be important for some of the manufacturers on the call is ticket case management. Um, sometimes uh, we deliver products that uh, have defects or customers complain, so I can get visibility into that right here. So I can see that uh, the customer called in, they had an issue, um, and we need to call them to fix it. So there's a full rich service and support piece that we could get into uh, in a lighter call. So what I want to do real quick is I want to move into our Outlook integration. And I want to uh, show you that everything within the system is just hyperlinked. So if I click on John's email here, it's going to launch me into an email that would come just like this. And it would have John, John's signature. And the, the beauty and the strength of the Outlook integration is we have two sends, right? So this is to make it so much easier for that end user. If I click this send, it'll send the email to John and it'll go in my Outlook, but it won't be tracked in CRM. If I click this send, what it's gonna do is it's gonna send the email to John, just like normal, but it will automatically be tracked in the notes and history section that I showed you a minute ago. So imagine I'm sending him a quote or thanking him for a meeting. I can click this CRM and it will automatically attach it into the system. Again, giving your users better visibility into the communication you're having with John. Now let's say I have an incoming email. I often travel to customers when I do presentations like this and there's a dual monitor environment most people have. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And usually almost inevitably Outlook is open in one of them. Hopefully not Facebook or Twitter or something, right? But something more productive. Um, and so we understand that people are power users of Outlook. So what InforCRM has done is they've created this XBAR plugin. And what this allows you to do is view and consume CRM data from within Outlook. So it's another view for me as a sales rep to be more informed in a system I'm already comfortable with. So here's an email from Alec. He sent and said, you know, probably a typical email you may receive from one of your leads says, hey, Scott, it's a great meeting. Thanks for talking to, us, uh, talking to us about CRM. You know, can we follow up in a couple weeks for another demo, right? So there's a few things here. So Alec reached to me. There's two recipients, and you can see the contact cards that Alec, we know, is an account executive and, and the demo image at Abbott Worldwide, right? So the strength of the system is I can take Alec's signature and contact card and if I just release it, it's going to ask me what I want to do. Now, if Alec wasn't in the system, I could create a new contact and it's going to auto populate his name, title, uh, and the actual address. And it'll create a new contact in the system for me just from his signature. So I won't even have to scan a, a, a card or anything. What it's going to do is it's going to auto populate his information. 
So you can see it, it registered Abbott worldwide. Here's his first name, signature, all of that auto-populated. Now, Alec is already in the system for the sake of the demo, so I'm not going to create another contact. But what I can do is Alec said, hey, thanks for chatting, and he wants a follow-up, right? So I can come in and I can click this little four square button and I can start manipulating and taking action in CRM. So I can schedule a new meeting note or phone call right from here. So if I click a new phone call, it recognized that I'm uh, doing this from the email. So it puts the body of the email in there so I can reference that later, which is really nice. I could associate this to an opportunity. I could create a priority, said so this is a really important phone call or even assign it to someone else. So again, maybe Alec is a customer of mine and he emailed me and said, hey, I need uh, to extend my credit terms. I could schedule an activity for someone in finance perhaps to call. And so Alec says, call me in two weeks. I'm gonna say, all right, we'll call you on the 21st. I'll make it timeless because I know I just need to call him. We don't have a, a specific meeting and I'm gonna hit save. And quickly, I just create an activity, a reminder for me to call Alec in a couple weeks. So in two weeks from today, that's going to pop up on both my Outlook calendar and my CRM calendar so I can stay informed. But I can go a level deeper. If I get an email from Alec, I want to start understanding who Abbott Worldwide is, right? So I can come in and start getting CRM information right within Outlook. So I can view the activities we have. Do we have any open opportunities? We sure do. Are there any tickets? So I can come in and view those tickets right from within Outlook. So it's a really nice way in a light view, I guess, for me to view Outlook information, understand who this client is, and start taking action in a way that I'm familiar with, right, within Outlook. So now that I've built my list of my customers in St. Louis that I'm going to go to, I've planned a little bit by looking at the account, and I sent Alec an email saying, hey, I'm coming to St. Louis, let's chat in Outlook. I want to start planning my day because now I'm going to go in the field. So what I'm going to do is I want to actually bring up some turn by turn directions because I'm going to St. Louis and I don't know where these accounts are. So I'm going to use contour, which is one of our mapping capabilities, and I'm going to get turn by turn directions to visit those accounts in St. Louis. OK, so I'm going to come in and say, give me a list of all of the accounts that are within 25 miles in this case of our headquarters in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. So it queried the system really quick based on the address of all the accounts that are within 25 miles of our address in Pennsylvania. So it brought back seven. So in theory, I could have done this to St. Louis, right? So give me a list of those accounts in St. Louis and it would have brought up those eight accounts. But for the sake of the demo here, uh, we have it built for our Carnegie, Pennsylvania office. So here they are, I could call them, schedule activities, start drilling into each one of these. But I wanna bring these up on a map because I'm not sure, you know, I'm not familiar with that area. I wanna figure out where these are and how to best get to them as I start, uh, you know, traveling. So here they are all on a map, starting at our office and moving through. So in theory, as I'm calling these, I can rearrange them, right? So I could say Hayes Design, they want me to visit them at the end of the day. And perhaps City Packaging says, you know, we don't want to visit today. So now I've only got six separate stops. And then I click the Get Directions, and I now have a direct turn-by-turn -turn instructions on how to visit all of these accounts for the day, which is really powerful. I can print these out. I can rearrange them if I say letter, move them up, redo the directions, and it's going to change the order. So from here, I want to move into mobile. And I want to show you what this looks like now that I'm on my phone and I'm visiting those accounts. So I selected iPhone in this case, but really it would be any device, Android, iPhone, iPad, Surface tablet. It's just a HTML5 website. I selected iPhone because it's most common. But when I log in, it's going to take me to my schedule. So instead of having that main dashboard that we saw in the full web client, the mobile application is built just a little lighter, right? The purpose of it is for you to get into the system, get the information you need, and then get out and start entertaining your clients, right? Going into meetings. So from here, when I come to my schedule, if you remember at the dashboard from the beginning of the presentation, I could see my activities for the day and I had three. So here it's reminding me that I need to send that proposal and then I need to go visit John. 
But here I have that main navigation that we saw down the left hand side. So I can view my calendar, accounts, contacts, leads, opportunities, tickets, invoices, quotes, receivables, all the things that we wanted before, just in a slightly different view, right? I'm in a six inch iPhone screen, not a 25 inch computer monitor sitting at my desk. So if I came into accounts, I could look up Abbott really quick and it's gonna bring back Abbott worldwide. We tried to make this as intuitive and quick as possible. So if I click this button, it's gonna actually bring up some quick action items, right? Um, one of the things iPhones still do well is their phones, right? Uh, amongst all the millions of other things we do with our cell phones. So uh, I could quickly call Abbott and let them know I'm on my way or perhaps I'm running late. I could add a note in the system, which I'll show you in just a few moments or add an attachment. Some of the other manufacturers we work with that do some service, there's an HVAC company we work with out of New York, they use the mobile attachments uh, for pictures. So they'll, they manufacture HVAC units, you'd probably recognize their name, and they service them. So they go out and they take an, a picture of the broken unit, create a ticket to repair the unit, and then they take a separate picture when it's done. So they use the attachments for pictures for tickets, which is really nice. So if I click into Abbott Worldwide at the top, it's going to take me into the account view, similar to what we saw in the full dashboard. So you have those similar quick actions, again, trying to make it as easy as possible at the top. If I want to add a quick quote, right, I'm sitting in front of the client and they say they want a quote, I can add one really quick here or an order. I can do the contour we showed a minute ago. I can view all the accounts nearby, which is really nice. Maybe my meeting got over early and I want to go visit another customer that's pretty close. If you remember in the web client, we had all of that, the data in the gray bar across the middle, that's right here. I can view the contacts. Here's John Abbott. I could drill into John's contact card and I could get turn by turn directions using my phone. So John's in St. Louis. I sit in Arizona, so it would be a far drive for me, but <laughs> I could get to his turn by turn directions just using my phone's mapping capabilities right here. But one of the other things we can do is I mentioned, oh, I love the connectivity real quick, booted me out. Let me get back in. And we'll go back to Abbott. The strength of the mobile is as I use the mapping, I'm visiting my clients. I find that I use InforCRM mobile twice as I'm visiting clients. The first use case is I'm sitting in the customer parking lot and I'm preparing to visit with them. So Alec talked about this on the front end is I have the ability to see the notes in history. What have we done? Are there any tickets? What opportunities are there with this, with this client? So I can walk into that meeting more prepared. Or maybe I want to view the quotes and orders and invoices again while I'm sitting in the parking lot so I can go in and shake hands and thank them. And one of the really nice things we've done is we've built a mobile dashboard to make it even easier. So I can come in and down at the bottom, you can see here's an example of there's open quotes and invoices. Looks like I've got about $2 million in, in about 30 orders. And I can take it even deeper and say, what are we doing over the last 30, 60, 90, or 180 days? And then drill through into it. So I have 32 quotes. So if I click on them, now I'm drilling into those open quotes that are in the system. Again, if you come in the next presentation in a couple of weeks, I'll drill really deep into this and show you what this looks like on mobile. But again, understanding the, the power of sitting in the parking lot and getting that visibility without having to run reports before I go or call someone to give me this information. So now let's pretend I'm prepared. I got all the information I need. I go in and I shake hands with my client. And now the, the second use case is uh, now I'm in the parking lot after the meeting and I wanna take a note, right? Here's my trip report, here's my call report. I can come in here and I can just simply add a note. And the beauty is we've leveraged what phones already do well, which is voice dictation. So I can talk my notes into the system without typing, right? And if I do a regarding call report, oops, and hit save, I've now dictated that I was at this account, I was visiting them at that point. So my manager can now seamlessly pull his call reports every Friday afternoon or whenever he wants to do it, right? 
And I no longer have to remember every Friday afternoon where I was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I can come in. And if I look at notes in history now, I have 221. Here I was at Abbott Worldwide at 1234. And I talked my notes into the system without typing. So there's my call report. So what I wanted to do today was tease a little bit around the strength of using Infor CRM for your organization. You were able to see at the dashboard level, the strength of staying organized and getting the intelligence. I moved into account filtering and showing you how you can build pseudo reports. The Outlook integration of using a system you're very familiar with to be able to manipulate and view CRM data. The integration so I can view quotes, orders, and invoices, and then using this thing in a mobile device. So with that, I want to turn it back over to Alec, uh, but please come back in the next meeting where I'm going to spend more time diving deeper into the actual integration of orders, invoices, and quotes. So Alec, back to you. Thanks, Scott. So with that demo, um, we're just going to go into a very quick overview of PLOS Consulting and, and who we are and where we're coming from. I won't bore you with this. I'll go through these slides very quickly. But um, PLOS Consulting um, is a local Pittsburgh-based, um, so Pennsylvania company with a national presence. Right? We've been a service provider in the technology space for 20 years. Uh, we actually started uh, as a company on the product Sales Logics, which was then purchased by Infor CRM, uh, or Infor and turned into Infor CRM. So, the the product that you saw today, uh, we have been working with in some way, shape, or form since the very beginning of our company 20 years ago. Uh, we were built on CRM, specifically this product. So, um, as you see here, you know the company philosophy is is having a blended. Um, team of skilled employees who build long-term relationships with our clients, right? It's uh, strategic partnerships is what we really focus on. Um, we're not a one and done, do a project and get out. We really like to be a technology advisor to our clients. Um, we do a number of other things outside of CRM that we can advise on as well. So let's move to the next one. Um, and you'll see by the numbers here as an organization what our size and, and our spread looks like. So uh, as I mentioned, we're headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, actually in Carnegie outside of Pittsburgh, a few miles out. But uh, we were started here in Pittsburgh. Um, this is the location that I'm out, I'm out of. The majority of our resources are out of this location as well. But we do have other offices across the country, Boston, Tampa, Houston, uh, Sacramento and uh, Scottsdale, Arizona as well. So we have over a hundred consultants. Um, so most of them are CRM consultants. Some of them are in some other areas like uh, infrastructure, platform services, business intelligence, cybersecurity as well. Um, and we've got over 1000 active clients. So, uh, again, I said I'd, I'd make that brief. Um, I'm not going to go over everything that PLUS does, but if you would like to learn more, uh, we'd be more than happy to set up a personalized discovery session with you uh, to talk about you know, what system you're using now for CRM, if any, um, or if you're not using CRM, what some of those needs would be and um, where some applicable use cases would be in your environment um, that we could uh, advise on. Uh, we'd be happy to set that up um, in conjunction with Catalyst Connection as well. So that's uh, step one, you know, reach out to your Catalyst Connection representative uh, and or Plus Consulting. You'll see my information there. Um, my email information is on the screen as well as Scott Wolf's information, who you just saw the demo from. Um, and the second next step that, that I would ask of all of you would be, if you like what you saw today, um, please attend the second webinar in this series. This is a, a multi-part um, series of webinars regarding this type of technology and how it may help your business. So I would love for you to attend the second webinar. Um, the ask for that webinar is, you know, I would assume that most people on the call today are sales, customer service, maybe not on the technical end. Um, so I, I have the bullet point there that says bring your geek. Right? So if you have somebody in IT that you think would be interested in this, um, that wants to learn a little bit more from a technical perspective on how the integration with um, ERP and financial systems works. So this system talking to some of your other systems, please 
grab somebody in your organization who is technical, who's in the IT field, and, uh, and bring your geek to the second webinar to learn more about that integration. So, uh, with that, um, that's all we have for today. So really appreciate your time. Um, I'll turn it back over to Catalyst Connection if they want to give some closing remarks. Uh, but uh, again, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the afternoon.